Hello, everyone. Let's get the webcam on. There we go. How is everybody doing evening, afternoon? Probably nobody in the morning, but yeah, our next video is going to be recorded for episode 20 of our custom GTR2 career. So Tyson, Bucho, Walter, everyone else, thanks for hanging out. Uh, Walter, there was a cart club in my town from 1980 to 1990. And then it started again on the dirt tracks. I want to try. I wish we had the dirt road courses that I've seen over in Australia and some parts. I think it's like Italy and in Europe, they actually have dirt road courses. I would love to try that. It would be like the perfect marriage of everything for me. It looks so much. It looks like a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out. Uh, if you're not familiar with this format, I actually use this format as a way to not only interact with everyone in chat, but to also record a video uh, and my next one. So it gets edited down after we're done here. And uh, I'm enjoying it. Derek, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for hanging out. So we'll get rid of the thumbnail here. Uh, so this time, I'm hoping... Uh, I've had the reminder from the last stream to use the four gigabyte patch. I thought I was using it, but I don't think I was. So I've made sure I've started it this time. So hopefully we don't have any cra periodic crashes that can happen from this title. Uh, 2001 season still. This is the American Le Mans series. We're at Laguna Seca. We're going to do about a 40 minute practice. Probably won't use up the whole thing because I've run at Laguna Seca with this car already. So I have a baseline setup to work off of. We're just going to kind of double check things. Uh, then we have two quick qualifying sessions. Not very long at all. Uh, limited to three laps. And then we have, I believe it's a 45 minute race. So hopefully. I'm going to go here. Check in all the 2001 series cars. We did have to get rid of, unfortunately, the Ascari. The Ascari won't start and it causes a problem and I'm not sure why. Make sure it's still, yep, we're good there. So we'll double check ourselves. We are at 108% strength. Tristan. How's it going, Joe? What's going on? Any news on GTR3? Scorpion 2, what's going on? Um, GTR3, I wish there was news on GTR3. I haven't seen any at all. Weren't we supposed to get that thing like, I don't know, a year ago at least? Uh, my, I have two theories. Is that Michael, hey, thanks for stopping by. Um, I have two theories. One is that the Unreal Engine that I believe they were going to use. Oh no, Ascari's. <laughs> the Unreal Engine that they were going to use uh, is giving them more of a problem than they anticipated. Or they've looked at a market that maybe they're rethinking or... I guess a third theory is they could be waiting for next gen consoles to come out because I believe that was supposed to be a console centric title. Um, so I guess we have a few theories floating there. Development hell could be a reality. Who knows? It could be a mix of all of them. I'm not, not really sure. So hopefully everything, I think I've got everything good to go. Both qualifying, both there, there. Oh, put more cars on the track. Pardon me, race per 45. Okay. Well, so GTR 3 is supposed to release in 2018 and supposed to be shown at some game show. Can't recall which this year. Still nothing shown, however. Yeah, it was something like that. It was... I... St it wasn't it announced a long time ago. Like, didn't it get announced 
was it 2017 or 2016? I don't know. It was something a long time ago. All right, let's see how many GTS cards we have. There's us, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So there's twenty of us. All right. Like four years ago, January 2017. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't understand announcing a project so early that you were not prepared. Was it last year that they announced that they were hiring for people? Was it last year in 2019 or was it the year before? Because I know they... There was like radio silence for a really long time and then there was like a very tiny small flurry of news and I think one of them was where they were looking for people to work on it. The field VR approach, ouch. Ouch, that's that's the hard thing with kickstarting something. For all the good intentions that may or may not be present, if you're not delivering on time, uh, people tend to get a very sour Taste in the mouth for the brand. Man, it's actually a little on the warm side here today. I had to kick on the AC. Okay, let's load. Let's load our setup again. We want about well, six laps of fuel in it. It's about what the AI use. And we're going to take about five laps or so to deal with the car. Let me know about sound levels because I did make an adjustment. They sounded a little too quiet to me when I was editing. 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 <laughs> when I was going through and making up my video. Post games come. Discussions are continuing with various partners. Once release date is agreed and confirmed, we will announce it immediately. That was from August. Okay. I guess I could be correct and use the pit speed limiter. So yeah, the Ascari would just sit in pit lane and with GTR2, if all the cars don't complete qualifying, it actually messes up the starting grid incredibly bad. I made some... I've made some adjustments to the AI difficulty. Hopefully we get a little bit closer race throughout the 45 minutes. Yes, thanks for the info. We have a decent amount of money sitting in the bank in our career right now. So there is the possibility of buying a new car at the end of the season. We're in, I think it's September right now of the season. So we're getting close to the end. Let the tires warm up here. So hopefully I didn't make the... AI too difficult. Not that I need to finish first. I just want a good race out of it. I do have to be careful. It seems like at the corkscrew they'll run into you. Let them go by here. Since they're on my rear, we're just trying to get a baseline for tires here. Just enough to get the tires up to a good solid temperature. Oops. 
touch of the gravel there. This car does not like the curbs. Because it was funny, when I was doing my testing, I used the, the S7. And man, that thing handles curbs super nice. This thing, it's not so nice. Got a little understeer on throttle right now. See what that's like when the tires get up there in temperature. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that, Bubba. Like I said, hopefully versus the last two rounds, we get a little bit more of a battle with the AI. And this being our home track and where we finished in the last race. The sponsor paid all of our entry fees and we virtually have no travel expenses because this is our home track. So that is the plus of racing here at Laguna versus somewhere else in the country or abroad. Ian, hello. It looks like the Ferrari is going to be tough. guy go by. It's so cool to have the prototypes on the track. They look a little bit more behaved than mid-Ohio. Too deep. Too much curb. That was nice. As always, rev matching on the downshift. Usual. Got one more lap to do. We're still kind of at the top. Dropped off a little there. Tires up to temp. Car feels pretty decent. That's it. Just rolling out of the throttle there. And just as I get to the apex, rolling back in it so that it loads the suspension feels pretty good. Because that's always a... Uh, not only is it a spot on the track that you can mess up, but you can really lose a lot of time as well.
All right. Let's go take a look at the tires. Oh, but what is your current position in the class you're running? You mean at the track? Uh, we missed the points because we, we missed a couple races, so we don't have an official like point standing. So we're just doing pickup races, but I am going for preferring to run the ALMS races throughout this season just because they're closer. It won't cost me as much money. Um, so where are we at? We are, we got a couple guys up here that are quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine right now. In the GTS class, it looks like. Hopefully everybody will qualify and we won't have to redo this. That's the only, that's the only caveat. Um, I wasn't paying attention. I forgot to see if I hit six gear or not. Advanced. Reds go. Hello. Thanks for stopping by. Ooh. Left front is way too cold. We're gonna... Put another pound in it. Same thing here. That's even a little on the cold side. That's definitely not warm either. Hmm. Let's try this. Let's go ahead and put a full fuel load in it and just see what happens. So that's going to be what? Use the 15% method. Fifteen point one. All right, let's see what it does now. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. We'll we'll see how this goes again when we qualify. I don't want to qualify any better than fourth. That way, in case I do get better during the race, there's a chance that we still have a good battle. But we also don't want to qualify like that's interesting. Oh, speed limit down pit road. What speed limit? Um, Darbo, how's it going? Yeah, we don't want to qualify too far back in the field in like the bottom, I'd say quarter ish of the field, because then you get a race that can also do the same thing where you're just back not doing anything and nobody really wants to watch that either so we'll do another five laps see where the tires are make any more adjustments we need and then we'll qualify Bubba, always good to be involved in a good battle for position. Regardless of where you start. Yes. And that's the whole point. I think most people, again, when they race offline, besides like little kids, are just looking for an immersive race and battle. That car bouncing like that on pit road concerns me. <laughs> concerns me because I don't want to do it again. And we're only hitting fifth gear, so I'm going to need to make a gear, a gear adjustment here.
Oh, a little deep. A little deep. Yeah, even with the track theoretically getting faster, we're still in the upper half of the GTS field, so that's good from my quicker lap earlier. I feel like I need to move that just a tad bit closer. Felt like my arm at any moment was going to hit the microphone. Whoops. And you can see with the fuel weighing us down how much slower we are. point is to kind of see how the car is going to react during the race, how the tires are going to interact with the added, the additional weight. And this is all quick stuff, like, you know, if you were really going to do, let's say, an online race where you're going to be really competitive, obviously you would want to try a full fuel run, see where the tires are at the end of the, the fuel run you'd have a better indicator of what the car is doing. Well, they got rid of the, the prototype jumping in the pits there. We've got a yellow flag somewhere. That could be the car leaving the pits, maybe? Oh, nope, we got a prototype off in the dirt. I did put full course cautions on. I don't know how bad that's going to bite us. This is the first time I've used full course cautions because we were kind of joking last time that because I was pulling away, we <laughs> we could have used full course cautions. Made it a little more interesting. Cross our fingers. Hopefully it doesn't bite us. I feel like as I'm doing this series, I'm always kind of learning things about the AI or how to set up a race. So it's all an in progress kind of situation until I go through every scenario, every track. Uh, the idea is, you know, hopefully when you come back to that track with the same group of cars, you get an even better race. Well, that's the hope at least. You can see I don't have the straightaway speed that car has. All right, our last lap on the tires here, and then we'll take a look. The tire temps, see if we did any better. Is that GTR3 yet? Yes, Alec, everybody wants to know about GTR3. We could pretend. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Jeff. It's one of my new purchases. Ooh. Horse is a little quicker once he got up to speed. Oh, slow down, please.
See if first gear works a little better. It's debatable. That is a very good guess, Bubba. Road Atlanta just might be next. You are correct. I don't think there's any races. I'll have to double check my schedule that I did, but I don't think there's any races between this one and Road Atlanta, which is, of course, the Petit Le Mans. So we would do a slightly even longer race than we're doing here. All right. Let's look at tires. A little better, not by much. Um, I'm going to... This may bite us in the rear, but I am... I'm going to raise... These and just... Cross our fingers and hope for the best, because these are not... This one's negligible. Like, it's close. I'd like it to be around 180 here-ish. But these are definitely... All these are definitely too cold, especially the front. And, of course, that's because there's not a lot of weight on the front end of this car. So, we're trying to counteract that. I've already played with the right height before. You can see when we're coming out of the, um, the corkscrew down into that next turn, we're... we're bottoming out just a little bit. You can see tiny wisps of spark coming out. So we really don't want to go any lower. Theodore, have you ever tried to take out telemetry from game and analyze it? I have not. I know you can. I believe that's what the MoTeC does, but I, I have not. Again, I'd probably be more inclined to do that if I was um, doing like some sort of like a league race or trying to be super, you know, ultra competitive. Let's change our gear ratio here. I don't like that. That's an ugly, that's an ugly look. That's not what I want. That's gross. So I had it there. And we can't we can't go any lower on the final. Let's shorten that up, shorten that up, shorten that up, shorten that up. Problem is we can't go any shorter. I think that's why I had it that way then. Okay. Seventh gear, is that, <laughs> yeah, is that for a Fanatic? I'm not familiar with how many cars actually used a, a seventh gear in this era. I'm sure there might be one or two. All right, we're going to save this. Save. As 45. Okay. And then what we got to do is run practice all the way out. We do have a couple cars that aren't posting times. So hopefully these two end up posting times in the, in one of the two qualifying sessions. Cause if they don't, it drops you like another half the positions that you were for whatever reason. If they don't post times, it just throws GTR2 into like this weird, weird thing. So cross our fingers. Hopefully those two post times. Otherwise, I'll have to redo it. Which isn't a huge catastrophe because then we just skip practice because we've already done practice. Um. But these are the kind of things I run into when I try to make a video. I just don't. I just don't toss it out. All right. Qualify one. Again, we get three. Technically, it's two laps, but it counts it as three. But it gives 
everybody 15 minutes to get their qualifying laps in in case one of the cars has an issue. They qualify on softs. They also take roughly four laps ish of few fuel fuel. Thank you. You know what? I should save this just in case it crashes. Hopefully not. It's been good so far since I've made sure I'm running the four gigabyte patch. Cross your fingers. Turn our pit road speed limiter on this time. See? Oh, <laughs> oops. There's that that car over there. Kind of concerns me. I don't know why you would make the pit road car collidable. I wonder if that's something you can turn off in GTR 2. I think you can turn that off in R Factor 1 where the pace car is not collidable. Oh, don't do that while the tires are cold. It's not close enough for the blue flag yet. <laughs> yeah, just by hitting the pace car, somebody's day got worse. takes about a, I don't know, a lap-ish to get the soft tires to fire. Still not sure if I like first gear there or if I like second gear. Oh boy. Please don't hit me. If we're too far down the standings after one. Thank you. If we're too far down the standings after. Oh, nope. Don't do that. First round of qualifying. We'll run another, we'll run the second round. Not so far. Well, with the exception of Pit Road. Oh, no. Just go to the left. Go to my left. Okay, we got one more lap. Three tenths up.
Okay. Cross our fingers here. Fast forward. Hopefully everybody gets a lap time here. If not, then hopefully two. These two right here could be causing us issues, though. Mm hmm. Well, where did that put us in the GTS field? One, two, three. It's a little too high for my liking, but maybe we'll get some better results. After qualifying two, let's go ahead and save this just in case. All right, cross our fingers that everybody makes the time. Because if they don't, then I'm going to have to figure out something else. It's so funny, you know, you test this so many times and there's just times where things throw, throw a kink into the mix. Yeah, the problem is they'll start back there, but then it'll throw me way down the order two, which then kind of skews everything. Okay, that's looking good. Come on. Come on, you two. These two are going to be the problem children, aren't they? You jerk faces. All right. Well... That messed things up. One, two, three. This is fine. This is okay. Fourth is a good spot to start, but not... See, watch. It'll completely destroy... I'll just continue to warm up and you'll see how it destroys. We're in 22nd right now. And all of a sudden we're down in 35th. All because the two P67s didn't qualify. So let's shorten the field by two, see if that resolves our problem. Otherwise, I'll have to remove those two cars if they crop up again from the mix. So we're not going to go through, I'm just fast forwarding through uh, practice. I'm not going to do practice. That way we can get right to qualifying again. <laughs> I don't know if you saw Ian. I, I do not have the beloved Ascari in this because they were causing that, that issue. They wouldn't even leave the pits. The Ascari, Ascari. All right, so let's fast forward here. Yeah, that's a bug and a half. That's so sometimes it's the mod, sometimes it's the, uh so sometimes it's the track and sometimes it's the car. You just kind of uh, cuz and then sometimes it's literally how many cars you have on the track because they gave them odd pit stalls. So I actually wanted to do a race at Barber Motorsports. I think it was Barber and I couldn't because literally like the fourth pit stall it would assign the cars couldn't leave the pit stall and it completely destroys uh, the race. Now we have these guys not leaving the pits. It's because it's Milka, that's why. So again, just the challenges of trying to create a quality race with some of this stuff. We had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Still a large field for GTS if these guys would do something. Yeah, but it's a bug that they never fixed. It's a known bug. They never fixed it. So I kind of have to work around 
this. All right. Well, cross our fingers. We'll try this again. I apologize. Grid. Throw a minute already onto the track so we don't get an unfair advantage with no traffic. It's going to hit the pace car. Pull in a Days of Thunder. I don't know why, again, I don't know why you would stick the car at the end of pit road like that. I don't know why you would make the AI run into that line. I don't know why you would, uh, if it is an issue, I don't know why you would make it collidable. Yeah, it was a Lister, and I, then I think a, either a Viper or a Ferrari couldn't tell hit that as well. You know, it's not something that you're going to have to worry about when you race if you don't have a pit stop, but the concerning part would be if you ended up having to have pit stops, are they going to run into the cars? Is it just because there's so many cars on pit road? Like, and, you know, obviously this isn't for every track. It's just this particular one. Oh, don't run me over, please. That is like the worst spot for them to catch you. Are you talking about the Ascari or just the prototypes in general? Because I'm not so sure that the prototypes are broken. I think it's just the combination. Because when I had a smaller field and I was testing, I didn't run into this issue. Uh, and I even tested at like 30 or 35 cars and it didn't, it didn't seem to have this problem. But it also seems to be dependent on the types of cars that it throws on the track. So it's really hard because you have no control over what cars get thrown on there unless you want to delete the cars that might potentially be having a problem. So that's just... Yeah, see, so earlier those those six, 675s weren't having an issue when I tested earlier. The Ascari just wouldn't leave pit road at all. It just sat there. So it's got to be something with the way it's in the pit stall or something that it just doesn't want to start. There is a way to fix that, but I'm not familiar enough with how to do it. But somebody was describing it's the like the RPM or something that they want to leave in actually makes the car stall. But if also if the pit stalls aren't done well, that can cause problems. Go. Do not run into me. Playing in the dirt. You know, and stuff like this makes multiplayer seem like a simpler option. You know, you just kind of get in and go. How are the AI compared to R Factor 1? Uh... 
they are comparable. Um, I don't know that there's a giant... I don't know that there's a giant difference in how they act. Because I think you can get the R Factor 1 AI to provide good racing as well. This is our last lap, I think. Okay. Oh man, look, all these cars have not set a time yet. Come on, guys. Killing me. Come on, man. See how inconsistent it is? There's like no good formula for why, because in another in another test, this BMW left left the pits just fine so this is mm, i do the best i can here where did it put us we're further down so these guys are quicker qualify two at least on your tv <laughs> don't tell i racing that joa all right, come on, guys. Otherwise, this has given us a problem two times in a row. Oh, yes. I might just have to get rid of this thick barber car. Come on. Get a time. Get a time. Yep. So the P675 is giving us an issue. Okay. Okay. So we would have been fine. We would have been totally okay had the P67 actually thrown in a time. Because again, you'll watch me. We're sitting 31st. I will be clear down. Oh, it kept me in 31st. Well, the heck with it then. We stayed the same position. I'm not going to worry about it. That'll work. Save it just in case. We've got a P675 starting from the rear. Uh, that's probably not going to be super awesome. But we'll run with it. We'll see what we get. Again, hopefully those full course yellows also don't bite us in the rear. This is why sometimes it takes me like a full day or two to two to to put a video together. We're going to go out and just do a couple warm up warm up laps to reacquaint ourselves with the fuel load and the tires that we're running. Oops. Watch all these cars down here. Crunch, crunch, crunch. I'm going to have to look into an option to see if you can disable collisions with the pace car. Like I said, I know that you can do that in R Factor 1. Um, not so sure about GTR 2, though. Oh, it doesn't slow down. Oh, it doesn't slow down like it did with the soft tires. Do I think AC2 will have modding when it comes out? AMS2 will not. R3 might or would, considering the series history. Here's... I don't even know if AC2 is going to be a thing. Because of how strong the modding community is in AC1, what is their... What is their motivation for making AC2? Because people will just stay with AC1. Especially, you know, the problem with 
R Factor 2 was they made it more complex to make a car. You know, the tire model and everything else, it became more complex, and people did not want to go through that, so they stuck with R Factor 1 until Assetto Corsa came out, and Assetto Corsa, even though it is more complex than I would say R Factor 1 is, it's still decently simple. Simple's not the right word, but it's not as involved as making a car for R Factor 2. So, I don't see AC2 being a thing until AC dies off. They've got all their cards right now, I think, for uh, Competizione. Should have just left it in fifth. Uh, and I think that's where their focus is. I think that's where they're putting all their time, money, and energy to. And AC2 is just not... I don't, financially speaking, as a business person, I don't see how AC2 is going to be a thing. Not with as strong as the community is still for AC1. If it really starts to, well, hello. If it really starts to die off, then you'll see, I think you'll see, who knows, maybe hint at working on an AC2. But then they can't make that mistake that RF2 made and relying on the community to make the content. Because if they do that, I think, again, that will backfire. You know, give the community a really solid platform with well-rounded content. And then the community will take off and run with it. All right, we made a couple laps, kind of got ourselves reacquainted with a full fuel load and medium tires. Let's kind of put it on, put it on an LMP car here. And I, after AC, they should work on ACDC. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, David. And I think the main thing now needed for AC is rolling starts. Yep. Full course yellows. Uh-huh. And maybe bay better AI traffic management. A set of course, a direct copy. <clears throat> All those things, absolutely. You know, the fact that they didn't have any day-to-night transition, night racing at all, weather, all things that have been implemented would obviously make an AC2 much a, a much better platform for everyone it's just how do you justify number one you're already making one sim how do you justify making another sim that could potentially pull people away from the one that you're working on right now and number two what is the incentive for people to move over You'll have some people migrate over, but people, again, will not want to spend the money. It's going to be a much richer, much more diverse uh, catalog of cars from the modding community in AC1. So, again, until AC1 starts to really take a nosedive, which it doesn't show any signs of slowing down right now, uh, you will, I don't see why they would even think about putting out an AC2. It's just, that's just the way it is. Again, I'm kind of, I'm not looking at it from a wish list. I'm, I'm looking at it from a pragmatic business perspective. All right. So again, we're going to cross our fingers. Hopefully this race works out. It's 45 minutes. I'm going to make a pit stop. So I don't feel the need to make one while I'm driving for 45 minutes and I'll come back and I'll do my intro for the video and you guys can laugh at me and make fun of me. <laughs> I, I'm not even going to say anything about that. David Payne, make the same sim again. Nah. I, yeah, it's maybe if they took that model that they've done with 
ACC and implement it with a different idea, a different take, uh, some other series. Uh, wh who knows? That the model must be working because they're still making content for it. Obviously, they've got some sort of licensing agreement. So that could financially be helping, or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe they're paying for the licensing. Who knows? Because they've got that esports side of it. Um, yeah, it's it's hard to say. But both of their titles, even though they're not supporting AC1, is not slowing down. And obviously, development for ACC isn't slowing down either. Uh, I'm looking forward to the new pack, that being said. Ian I, says, I would buy, I would mainly buy simply for AI improvements. I've heard AC's AI can be hit or miss, especially with multi-class. Yeah, you really have to, and that's the problem. When you make the AI for, let me take these off. When you make the AI for Assetto Corsa, it's a one size fits all, and you really have to be careful about how you do it. So like when I make AI, it is typically for one group of cars. That's when it performs the best. That's when you see the best results. So when I would do like the Daytona AI, for instance, that I did, I used the Daytona prototype because it's kind of a GT. It, it kind of gives off vibes of a GT car, but it's as fast as a prototype. Uh, so you get a really good balance for the cars there when they do multi-class racing. When I would do the V8 supercars, or the Australian supercars now, I would do it just with the Australian supercars. I would not do it with the Daytona prototype because the car doesn't act the same. The line you take is going to be a little different. Uh, so if you want really good races, unfortunately, you have to cater to the, the type of car that you're driving. And it's not to say that you can't take a GT3 car race and put that to one that you've done for Australian supercars. It's just you may get a really good result or you could get a poor result. And if you get a poor result, then you need to use a GT3 car to make the AI. That That's Assetto Corsa's biggest flaw. If you listen or talk to the guys from Race Room, they develop their AI specific for every car. That makes what they do different. Uh, Matt, Matt, do you think Circuit Sim Market is already saturated? We have like seven titles all doing the same thing. Time to look at other forms of racing. Well, that's what I argued with, to your point, that's what I argued with ACC when people were like, oh, it doesn't have this and it doesn't have that. I'm like, actually, if you look at the spectrum of what we have right now, it's an all-encompassing, and there's so many that have so many cars, but they don't fill out a series. And to me, ACC kind of stands out because they focused on one. I actually think there is an opportunity to build off of a platform like that and then make other titles because you can use the licensing from those tracks, but with different cars. Yes, it's still going to cost you money, but you don't have to relicense the tracks. If you wrote your agreement out with the licensee from the track, you could, you should be able to use it in another project. You know, obviously there's timeouts and things like that. So I think if other develop developers took that stance where instead of trying to make the Forza or the Gran Turismo style where a bunch of cars, if you made purpose built games like ACC does, well then you get a wider variety of people playing uh, because if every sim does the same thing, then you you fracture the market. Um, this would be more specialized. And yes, those people that don't like certain styles of cars still aren't going to play those games. But are you really worried about that then? Your development costs could be lower. Like there's just other things that are at play. Um the caveat to that would be if you make a broader sim, you have the chance of making more money because it brings other people into the fold. I don't know how all that works. In my mind, a more singular focused series makes sense. David, oh, uh, Ian, and that is before the modded content. Uh-huh. 
David, AC2 would need a killer feature that AC doesn't have. Exactly. Do I think they need to go the way of ACC? Maybe ACC Trans Am? Oh, I would love an ACC Trans Am series. I don't know that that's popular enough to do, but TA2 cars would be awesome. Mm, ACC IndyCar, uh-huh. Matt, Matt, tons of stuff that can be simulated with a wheel. Yeah, okay. Maybe a purpose-built Formula E game. Maybe that is not popular enough. Maybe it isn't, but... I think that's maybe like the Trans Am stuff, but maybe it is. I mean, how do we know? They're obviously making Formula E content for R Factor 2, so they would have data to see how popular that is, right? And if only you could have multiple AI lines for different cars like R Factor 2 supposedly can. So the way, if I understand it correctly, the way R Factor 2 works is... There is like a best line and then a passing line. So it's not individual for each type of car. It's more that it gives more alternate paths. The way AI works in a set of Corsa, which actually isn't bad, is it tries to predict. And if you do the borders, these invisible borders on the track, it can kind of do the same thing. It's just... It takes longer uh, and for people that don't have patience or don't care about AI on a track, then it makes the AI perform really terrible. Formula E mod for R Factor was surprisingly fun. Is that an official mod? It's it's official content from R Factor 2, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if they have all the tracks, but they do have a few tracks. There's paid DLC. Um, there is the Formula E. You get off the workshop. I don't remember if that's paid or not, but it's it's official as far as I can remember. Gloom free, my side of the pond. We're crying out for BTC. I would love. I'm right there with you. I would love a BTC C sim. I think it would be great. Um, I don't know if anybody saw that article of that motorsport group taking over. Uh, 704 games and stuff, but their idea is also to have like a BTCC sim. Like they want to do all these things. It'll be really interesting to see if they ever get any of their ideas off the ground. But I saw it on Twitter and I think it's a division of motorsport.com or something like that. I'd have to look at it again to remember. <laughs> Matt, Matt, now make that a 90s BTCC and I lose my mind. Yep. Great era. Um, I was exposed to... The Toka slash, I guess you'd say that's the British touring car uh, stuff by the Toka series. And I fell in love. It's so funny how those games from that era, Gran Turismo, um, the Toka series, and even the uh, the race driver series when I, I wasn't really aware of V8 supercars. Like all those games exposed me to so much more about racing that I was not aware of and made me fans of it that... I wonder how many people were losing by not doing those dedicated sims. You know, how many people are not giving it a shot and expanding their knowledge of, of racing in general. And I would honestly like to see Super GT again, another, another great one that there were specific games in the PlayStation era that were all about Super GT stuff. And I think Nintendo 64 actually had a dedicated Super GT game, GT 500, if I'm not mistaken. Gluten free. Alan Gow of BTCC said it can't be done now, but that was before this latest release. And it was because of the money it would take. I think Motorsport, that new group, is taking a different approach that might make it feasible. So... You know, cross our fingers, you know, obviously that stuff's way down the road because they just announced it like a week or two ago. I'm going to save the game just in case. But, you know, cross our fingers. I would absolutely love something like that. Make it focus. Come with a good career mode. Come with good AI, but also come with uh, good multiplayer with ranked servers and stuff. I mean... Again, you might not get the money of catch-all, but you may get a hardcore dedicated fan base that might be much 
identify with your brand much more strongly than it would otherwise. And they'll give you, you know, and I'm not opposed to putting out DLC, you know, that stuff costs money to develop. And so can you imagine them iterating every year on a title, a BTCC title? And then, you know, for a reasonable amount of money, they charge for an update. If they, if you had BTCC people on board and they loved that, that game or sim, they would be throwing the, that money down. Why would they not? You know, so it, and it then in turn, I think it also makes fans out of those people for BTCC that they then in turn want to go to a race or follow it on TV more. I, I think that's what happened in the 90s that we lost. It's my opinion. Maybe it doesn't work like that anymore, but that's my perception. All right, so I'm going to go again, take a quick kick, stop. And uh, do my race or do my intro, and then we will hopefully have a good 45 minute race. I'll be right back. All right. Again, thanks for hanging out. This does make doing these types of videos for me more and en more enjoyable because I like having those discussions. You know, when we talk about what's possible, what's not possible theories, I think that's I mean, that's the part of sim racing I enjoy outside of actually driving, obviously, is. There's stories behind the developers. There are stories behind why and why why not, uh, or why they do not do things. I, I really enjoy all that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know. It's it's fun to speculate. It's fun to theorize. Um, it's fun to look back at old examples. But again, I like I said, I was really not aware of V8 supercars until. It was like Toka when I played Toka 2. I didn't play the first one, a Pro Race Driver. I'm, I said that all wrong. Pro Race Driver 2 um, exposed me to V8 Supercars, and I loved it. And Pro Race Driver, I didn't play before that. But it exposed me to the Supercars, and I, I love it. Again, same thing with Gran Turismo exposing me to cars uh, in series. Same thing with the original Toka series exposing me to BTCC uh, style touring cars. Like all that just, to me, it makes sense because that's how, what it did for me. Again, we're in a different era. Maybe that doesn't work anymore. I don't know. But I have heard people say that they are fans now that started sim racing and got into a series and then started watching it for for real, I know myself, actually, I've started watching way more sports car racing because of Sims. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Darren, random thought. How do you have time to race during the middle of the day? Uh, I have a job that's very fluid. 
Um, we actually got rid of a person. Uh, my job deals with like online logistics and purchase orders and stuff like that. So I'm not really bound to like a certain time frame as long as I get everything in because we don't typically do same day shipping. If there's a hot order, then I take care of it. But there's a certain threshold that we don't ship after and they don't care as long as I get all my work done. So if I have time or I get up really early and do all my work, um, I get off earlier in that it don't take that out of context, but I, <laughs> I'm able to do other things. And then there's some days where you see me where I can't do anything till way late in the day anyways. Uh, and that's typically because of work or I have other obligations to take care of. Uh, so we did just hire back on somebody else and we are actually out of the Christmas rush because I deal with, uh, the hobby industry still. So that's how I'm able to do this during the day. Uh, like sometimes I've started streaming at like 10, 30, 11 o'clock cause we're just dead. You know, today I couldn't do that. I had to wait till later, which is fine. You know, there were a bunch of people streaming earlier, like, how am I going to how am I going to garner any of the audience from like Gamer Muscle or I don't know if Super GT was streaming today, but like Jimmy Broadbent or anybody like that. And I don't I don't expect to. And I just appreciate anybody that decides to stop by anyway and hang out. So, um, again, I appreciate everybody uh, hanging out here. And. Uh, oh, let's see if I can do this. Did I save already? I don't even remember. I think I did, but we'll save one more time. Okay, let's. Carlos, what's going on? There's a supercar RF2 mod is pretty good. Have I seen that? I think I have. You're talking about the, the is it the VFR or whatever it is? Is it is it that mod or is it a different group? We're talking about the Australian supercars, right? Okay. Yeah, that one's good. Problem is, they don't interact well with some of the tracks. Some of the tracks have terrible AI. You know, I was trying to do, I think it was Adelaide, and they were just, they were flipping over walls, going into corners. It's like, ah. <laughs> and I don't think that's the AI, the the mod, the supercar mod's fault. I think that's a function of the track. And RF2 is so complicated that I can't fix that. You know, AC and um, those AC is so easy to fix is why I like using AC in that regard because because I it, it's just easy. RF2 is much more complicated. RF1, you actually need a, a computer that runs uh, no later than Windows 7. And I don't have that because the particular way to get into the files and stuff, I don't have the ability to. Just Windows 10 does it doesn't work with. Michael, I race in a super touring championship on GTR2 on a Monday night. If you're interested, just me. Just depends on what you mean by Monday night. Because I'm West Coast, you know, I'm in California. And usually most races don't work out for me. That's kind of why I like using AI. Other reason is there are things that I like driving that nobody else likes to drive for some reason. <laughs> Thanks, Joa. I appreciate it. Uh, usually that's not a time I can make, Michael, but. Um, well, I'd have to check. Darren, uh, remember I had a spreadsheet shown in a video briefly. Do I share that as a progress? If I was doing, um, I can. I was starting to show that, like if I was involved in the championship. Unfortunately, I missed races because I ran out of money. So um, at the end of the season, I can. Uh, it's just a bunch of numbers. I don't know how interested people are in that, <laughs> you know. I, I tend to get real nerdy about stuff. I either don't do it all or I go all the way in. I'm, <clears throat> I don't know. I find that kind of thing enjoyable. 
Vilmacher, RF2 hasn't succeeded as RF1 did because they made it more difficult to create content. Exactly. That's what I was saying earlier. They just made RF2 more difficult and people didn't want to mess with that. RF1 was much easier. And again, that's why I think people migrated to Assetto Corsa because while Assetto Corsa is more complicated than RF1, it is still not to the level of RF2. And once people go wrap their head around how to do content for AC, I think it's just, it's just continued to go up. I know there are people that produce content for RF2. They made a whole thing about trying to make it easier. I think it was Studio 397 made a whole thing trying to make it easier to make content for RF2. Um, it's kind of worked. Um, there's obviously people doing conversions, but I just think they lost all the momentum they had when they went to RF2 because of what they did. And they really relied on the community to provide a lot of the content, which I think backfired as well. Darren, I guess I'm interested in how a championship could be worked. Uh, so you can do championships. Um, doing an actual career with money and stuff, I, I don't know how to do all that. So uh, I'm sure there, there probably is a way to do it. I'm just not familiar, so all, everything I'm doing is done by hand. Um, you can make a championship, though, if you wanted to. Uh, it's a little easier for me not to because I bounce around in between series, but maybe next season in 2002, I'll try to make an actual uh, series. That way it'll record the points for me. It doesn't like doing points for um, multi-class racing, though. That's the only hiccup. So I would still have to do a point system myself. So I guess that kind of defeats the purpose. Villemacher, what... What AC would need to do is find a way to easily convert AC content to AC2, and then they can build on content instead of rebuilding. Yeah, I still think that people wouldn't do it. They didn't, they, they're, again, David made the point earlier, there'd have to be something significant about AC2 to bring people over from AC1, as long as that community is still strong, because people aren't going to want to buy it. Flat out, people aren't going to want to pay money. You'll get a very small percentage of the people that'll pay, Everybody will stay to AC1 because, well, like, I've already bought AC1. What's so different about AC2? So there'd, there'd have to be something else to pull people in. And then, yeah, if they made it easy to port AC1 material uh, mods over to AC2, well, then everybody would flock over there. But AC2 needs something to differentiate itself from AC1. And that's, I think that's harder. I think that's more difficult than... Uh, a lot of us realize I don't even know how difficult it is to try to come up with something else. Oh, no, no worries. I don't think AC2 will happen for a long time. Again, we need we would need that drop in AC1 popularity for AC2. They've got they're all in on ACC. They're not recouping any money from AC1. People are going to stick with AC1. If it's popular, they'll they'll lose money on AC2. All right. Love the conversation. I am going to start my recording for my video. So again, you guys are going to see me. Uh, you're going to hear me do an intro. I'm going to do the best that I can. <laughs> I might have to do it a couple times. We'll see. You know what? This looks a little better if we just kind of do this. All right. Mm, uh, AMS2, I don't know. They've said that it's not going to be mod friendly. So I don't know if that's going to be a thing. We'll have to see. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Again, feel free to laugh and chat. It's perfectly fine. I laugh at myself. Greetings. My name is Billy Strange, and welcome to episode 20 of my GTR 2... C? T... <laughs> now I'm going to laugh.
<laughs> Crap. All right, try this again. Serious. And scene. Greetings, my name is Billy Strange, and welcome to episode 20 of my custom GTR2 career. We are at Laguna Seca, the 2001 Le Mans Air... Greetings, my name is Billy Strange, and welcome to episode 20 of my custom GTR2 career. It is 2001 American Le Mans Series at Laguna Seca. Race is 45 minutes long. We've done qualifying, got that out of the way. A 38-car field. Uh, we had one, what was it, uh, 675 prototype not qualify. They're in the back. We're in the otherwise slowest class. Uh, we're kind of starting midfield there, but we are definitely towards the back of the whole grid. See how this goes. Hopefully we can kind of work our way forward, have a better race, in my opinion, have a better race than we did the last two races where, uh, again, the goal is not to blow everybody out of the water. The goal is just to have an awesome race with other cars, and um, we'll take it from there. I'll see you on the track. Time to buy a custom clapperboard, yes. Oh, John, you did get it working. Good. Yeah, take 56. There have been days where I've actually had to walk away. I've gotten so frustrated with myself. Sometimes, like in the past videos, I get it one take. And other times, my brain will not fire on all cylinders. And I, I get so frustrated that I get up, I have to walk away come back because I just, I feel like a, I don't know why I just sound stupid and yeah. You start getting self-conscious about the things that you're saying and you're not saying them right. And then you start tripping over your words. And I am recording. Good. I didn't, I didn't miss that. <laughs> Thanks Javier. A blooper reel. Yes. Yes. He's contradicting. <laughs> I'm I'm consternating. Do the intro standing up. <clears throat> I used to try to do that. But typically the reason why people stand up is actually so they breathe better. They use their diaphragm more cor uh, correctly. Uh, they tend to project more when they stand up. Uh, the only thing I thought about doing was, can you imagine, I don't have time to do this, but can you imagine doing it as, uh, an intro as a, an alter ego with like, as a broadcaster with a tie and a suit and like having some ridiculous name and talking slightly different, like, <laughs> I don't know things I think of in the middle of the night that nobody will care about, but I, I, it makes me laugh. I chuckle. All right. Continue to race. We do it live. Double check. Make sure I've got the right setup in the car. Got plenty of fuel. Probably a little too much, but at least we won't run out. All right. 45 minute rates. We look good. Let it do the grid walk here. How cool is it with all of the prototypes that is what I like about this is being able to throw the prototypes in although I think single make races provide it an actual better race because there's more variance the more cars you have on the track uh, it is cool to have multi-class race and see all the prototypes and stuff like that Stranger Billy. You know, I, I get all the time Doctor Strange. Two BMWs at the front. I think those are GTS cars. Callaway's a GTS car. So that's going to be tough to combat. I think they're classified as GTS. I'm not positive. They may be GTs now that I think about it. I don't remember. We'll see in the end. A multi pass. Just makes me think of uh, Fifth Element. Yeah, isn't it cool? I mean, you can always skip it, right? You can always hit the space bar, but it's it's a cool idea. Uh, 
I don't know how many people actually pay attention to this or like to do this, but you can actually turn autopilot on and let it take care of the front parts of this. Sometimes with how many cars are on the track, the AI tends to kind of surprise you per se. I need to turn this down just a little on my end. Like this, so the AI kind of takes care of it for you. <laughs> Race coverage from Pee Wee's Playhouse. I don't think we should do that, probably. And then just remember, it does take three seconds for it to transfer back over to you, so you just pause it again, turn autopilot off, and then it takes three seconds and you've got control of the car again. So we'll probably do it. I don't know. Probably after the corkscrew. Again, everything looks good on the recording. Cross our fingers that we don't have something catastrophic happen. Yesterday, my stream, they had a, a quick power outage at the, uh, like the node or something. So I lost internet for a few minutes and then it came back. I was like, maybe the, maybe the universe is trying to tell me just to stop live streaming for the day. Dun, dun, dun. Lots of Porsches in the GTS class. I know I'm cheating. I always thought it was funny how hardcore like. Does anybody really like driving under yellow? Does anybody like I, I kind of get the beginning of the race because you could you could. Um, warm the tires up and stuff like that, but I always thought it was funny that it's not an option just to let the just to let AI control under a caution period, because do people really like doing that? I don't. I find it tedious. But again, that could be me, you know, having raced in the real world. Like, I can't, I can't tell you, like, being under a caution period is one of the most frustrating things that can possibly happen. All right, we've got control. All right, getting ready for the green flag here. As always, if you end up liking the video, please click the like button. If you're new here, welcome. Consider subscribing and then hit the bell icon to be notified of future videos and live streams. We're doing this particular race live. Would love to have you hang out with us if possible. We have some great conversation on here. I really enjoy doing these videos this way. All right, 45 minutes. Here we go. Try not to get super aggressive here in the beginning. Oh, man. I usually try to hold my position actually through the first corner, so we'll let these guys go by. And now we'll spread out a little because I did qualify 35th, if I remember right. Or was it 31st? That was 31st, wasn't it? I don't know. It's kind of irrelevant. I've already let him go by. Car is loaded with fuel. So we're obviously not going to handle optimum until the tires really start coming up to temperature here. I think it's roughly a 20 car field for the GTS cars, which is the class we're in. Whoa, see what I mean? You got to be careful of the AI because they will. Oh, that wasn't nice. Well, can only go up from here. I was just about to talk about how aggressive they are in the corkscrew. Yeah, at least this, at least it came on lap one, right?
biggest key is when that happens not to get discouraged. Don't panic. Looks like somebody already went into the pits. Hopefully the cars come back to us as the race progresses. Doing the setup the way I do it, car typically starts to really come to us about the middle of the race. Again, we're probably a little heavy on fuel, but that's just to ensure that we don't run out. Because that's the last thing we want. But we are definitely in the back, aren't we? thinking about five laps in or so is when we might start making up some time. Although I think we're slowly chipping at the car in front of us. A little different than irising low split. Boy, it is going to be a slow crawl back up the field, isn't it? Probably going to have to push a little harder than I was anticipating. Try first gear. Or heaven forbid. Or, oh, yeah. Those those pickup races in iRacing always are interesting. I'll still take this over those. So we did have a little contact. I actually deduct money out of that to fix to fix the damage. So unfortunately, I have a holy crap. They're already on us. Oh, my Lord. Ooh. Ha! This is not going well. Yeah, it's prototype chaos. Oh man, ten sec frickin' A. Well, I don't restart unless there's a giant catastrophe, so we will just do the best we can here. Car doesn't exactly want to turn. We are catching 
8.8. Just got to keep plugging away at it. Something I had to learn with racing in the real world, like, just do your best not to panic. It's frustrating. Not saying I've never driven with anger before, but just you do the best you can when you're in a situation like this, this to mitigate the damage. We caught up almost two seconds that lap, so. I've kind of adjusted to the little bit of damage the car has. I think just have to keep plugging away at it. It's really not liking the right-handers, so. though. A little too deep. Not too bad. As long as we keep hitting that well, and then the final turn well. I think that's where we're gaining time. So concentrate on those. Try to minimize the damage. And not make stupid mistakes in other parts of the track. Nate Dog, never do well with Porsche in GTR or GTR2. It just takes a di I'm not a huge Porsche fan, beside, <laughs> besides me actually using one in the game. Um, it just takes a different approach. I tend to think of it as point and shoot versus like, I'm most comfortable with a front engine car. I tend to roll the car and feed throttle through the corner with the Porsche. You don't do that because it tends to pick up a lot of understeer, so you let just let the car kind of get in and then get out. Actually, learned that from a Porsche Cup driver I was talking to because I never really thought about it. Oh, this looks like the leader of the GT1 class. Go by, go by, go by, go by. Messed up my rhythm. Uh, yeah, and I know some people that, you know, don't want to drive anything other than a Porsche because that really fits their driving style. And I've worked on the setup. This one's definitely more, how do I put it, pliable than the initial setup on it. I think we're catching here. This is good. All right. Cross their fingers. Oh, we've had another car or two go to the pits. So we're moving up here. I don't know if that's in the GTS class or not. Doesn't doesn't tell us, so it's hard to know. Breaks too early. Oh, you love the Porsches and newer Sims? Okay, I get you. It just happens to be GTR2 or GTR in particular. I get it. You know, I understand that. I've got I've got ones that do the same thing. No reason to dive in there and just make it worse. Oh, blocking. Oh, that car's a lap down. So this car must be the car in front of us is for position. You know, now that I've made a little bit of adjustment to my driving style, since we got the little bit of damage and the tires are up to temp, like it's handled pretty good. 
would be nicer for more in the the mix of the fight, but I think we can get there. We obviously aren't going to compete for a win or even, I doubt, even a podium, but maybe a top five or a top ten is possible. <laughs> I can see more GT1 cars coming. Oh, this guy's going to go buy at the worst opportunity. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's the hard part is when you're a slow car trying to figure out when you can let these guys pass and not get annihilated. Oh, come on. There's a little more damage. That's a lot of damage. No, it's not. I like it. Pull in front of me and then slow way down. Go by on the left. Go by on the left. Come on. I don't want to get taken out. Come on. Figure figure your crap out. I want to pass these cars. Holy crap. Come on. As long as we don't have a catastrophic failure where I, to your point, Joe, as long as we don't have like a huge wreck, uh, we should be okay. But the problem is the sponsor is not going to pay for our entry fee for the next race, so that could be an issue. We have to finish top five in our class to get the, oh god, here he comes again. Go. I'm managing the traffic is worse. I can't get to race the guy. Okay, I hear you. Get out of here. I am passing this car whether you like it or not. Thought he was going to run into the back of me. GTLM is more like GTE and GTD is more like GT3. Again, I don't know why we need to use a bunch of different naming conventions. I don't know why people just don't get on the same page. Oh, I missed your other comment. Billy, you can always get a gold jacket with a black round patch for the... <laughs> okay. Guys, yeah, next car is seven seconds ahead. Half an hour to go. Not making a ton of headway here. Oh, please don't hit me. <laughs> One is metric, the other is imperial. I just think it confuses the audience for no reason. Hoping we can have a little bit of clear track for a few laps to reel in the next car. Go 
Go ahead. Go, 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 go. Really didn't make it any time this lap, did I? Yeah, a little bit. What about GTE? Is that marginally different? Yeah, there's like small subtle differences or something. I don't know. I know for sure GTD and GT3 are different. I don't know how big of a difference GTE and GTLM are though. I don't remember. All right, we're catching him. Yes, David, they did. They just announced. The whole DPI and go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. The whole DPI and uh, hypercar convergence or something like that. I didn't know if he was going to dive on the inside or not. Go by. Well, this is tough on Laguna. I mean, we're having we're not having any of the Ascari nonsense and prototype nonsense from last time, really. But I feel like I can't make up any time because I'm constantly having to get out of the way. Yeah, just call them World Sports Cars. Yep. Yes, pass him, pass him, pass him, pass him. There we go. Out of pepper. Yeah, this this by far would be my worst race this season. I did again. I didn't know if they were gonna dive to the inside of me or not. I don't want this guy running into the back of me. It's gonna outbreak me going in. There we go, there's one more down. Next guy's eight seconds ahead.
Yeah, losing the forge was not, did not help anything. Guy behind us is hanging on. Oh, easy now. Let's not do anything stupid. They did have a really good race at Daytona, though. That class. our next car right up there oh didn't turn in soon enough Cover it with a fourth new. Okay. I'm surprised BMW's still doing it. You know. Man, it's making me work. What's that? Yeah, I, I think I would be liking this race a little better if I hadn't had issues in the very beginning. Been a little cooler to fight amongst the front runners in my class. But we're slowly having to chip away. I didn't gain much time through there. Oh, yeah. Nope, didn't gain much time through there at all, did I? actually pulling away that's not good
back here in no man's land. Here comes the Celine. I assume that's the leader in the GT1 class. Just pulling away. It's a little bit of a game through there. Trying to let the car roll more. Try not shifting the six there just to see if it made a difference. So when I didn't need the traffic the faster cars and they were coming through they came through and now that I need them to kind of mess him up they're not coming through but no full course yellows and we have those turned on so that's a plus push starting to sweat Lost time in that spot, that's not good. Yeah. Oh, here they 
they come. Come on, go by. Go, 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 go. Missed it. I'm in class I'm gonna guess I'm probably about four ah, I don't even know it's a good question 15th 14th maybe there's too many too many problems at the beginning I mean this guy's for position right in front of us but he's been really tough to catch. Yeah, we just got bounced around at the beginning. Had a couple incidents. It's trying to let one car pass because they're really aggressive coming into the um, corkscrew. They got in front of me and then when I got on the throttle, I bumped them and it almost did like a, a lazy half spin off the track and then as the prototypes came through they um bounced off of a car in front of us spun them out and they spun right into us which made us crash into the wall like do a complete spin and crash into the wall so we've got a little bit of damage we're battling along with some some bad luck slow down too early. What am I doing? Eight minutes to go.
just don't have, I think, the engine to keep up with these guys. Wow, too much curb. Go, go, go. Don't mess him up, please. How did I get my wheel rotation working? I'm actually running at 360 degrees because the game was never meant to really, I don't think, have more than that for if you want to match the rotation on the screen. I think that's what you're referring to. And to be frank, that it, it feels better at 360. Running at 900 or even 540 feels very sluggish to me. over five minutes to go. I don't know if we can get this guy or not. I need a little help. Oh, it didn't slow down. Oh, and I left it in third. That's why. Oh, I'm an idiot. Stop doing that. All right, thanks for stopping by, Rashid. Oh, I think. I did patch in the brake fade. I think we might be losing a little bit of our brakes here. No, don't do it here. Do it up here. Go, 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 go. Go ahead. Go, go, go. Yes, yes. Do it. I need a little more help. Come on. Oh. Too much break. I tried way too hard. Hmm. Now we're broken. Oh, that was dumb. Yeah, car's broke.
Car won't slow down, car won't do anything. Steering's off center. That was stupid on my part. Yeah, it's just not slowing down anymore. Oh, it's just wandering everywhere. As a reminder, I did the outro for the video. I know it gets confusing. Actually, I'll leave it in that. Uh, but if you guys want to hang out and chat afterwards, you know, I'm more than more than happy to. I know this wasn't, this definitely didn't go the way I wanted it to go. Just poor decision making on my part. I'm just trying to hang on to the car and just make it to the end. Yeah, I could pit, but there's no reason to. I'd lose more positions if I pit. Better just to write it out here, make it to the end. Got one more lap, I believe. A combination of things happened. I put myself behind the eight ball by not being aggressive enough got caught up in another car kind of brake checking us then I got caught up in a car getting lapped and spun out and spun into us and then I was making time back and just about three laps ago or so I made a mistake trying to pass this car right here right there and spun out and hit the wall which is severely messed with our steering. This guy's gonna punt me if I'm not careful. Oh God. Uh, I have the brake fade patch in here, which the brake brakes have faded. <laughs> well, I mean, that's one way to get a position, I guess. Yeah, so it's a little bit of, little bit of luck and a little bit of my eagerness trying to make up positions <laughs> yes <laughs> all right well I've got a bunch of damage to pay for that's for sure and uh, I've got a bunch oh just not the race I wanted to have in my career here kind of really 
messed with us. While these guys finish, I have to make another pit stop because apparently I've drank way too much water. I apologize. I'll be right back. Oh, and I am sweaty. Yuck. My apologies. All right, let's see. Well, you know what? I'm going to do my outro again. I know this is confusing. I'm not actually leaving. This is for my recorded video section. Again, if you guys want to hang out afterwards, totally uh, for it. So I'm going to do my outro for the video, kill the recording part of it, and then keep streaming. All right, well, that race did not go as planned. I've got a bunch of damage to pay for a little bit on my part and a little bit on other cars on the track. That is the nature of multi-class racing, though. Uh, we were able to finish a little bit of a rocky finish at the end, but we picked up one more spot. Uh, where did we finish in the GTS class? Not great, but... Let's give it a count here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15th is where we finished. Um, I think we could have finished up here somewhere had we not had some of the issues we had in the beginning. I don't know that a top five was possible. I Like I said, I definitely kicked up the AI difficulty so it wouldn't be so easy to win. Um, but I will... Kind of make note of this, look at some of the stats, and make an adjustment for the next race. I appreciate you all watching. You all have been great. I've been strange. Take care, and I will catch you in the next video. All right, recording's done. Again, I'm not le actually leaving if anybody wants to stay. Appreciate it, John. Thanks. I should bring, <laughs> yes, Mike, I should drink uh, Red Bull for quicker pit stops. Okay. My indicator on if I got the AI adjusted correctly was where, yeah, I actually had the AI just a tad too difficult for the race because, again, where's... GTS so one let's see here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen is that twenty I lost count. Damn it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So I'm 17th in GTS for lap time. 18, 19, 20. So that's too low. I needed to be no worse than 15th, in my opinion. So I had the AI just a tick too high. Just just a little bit too high on my end. Not that I'm aware of. I could be wrong on that. 
uh, Darren, but I am not aware that it exports the results because I've looked for them before, but maybe they're just in a location that I'm not familiar with. <sighs> well, that was, that was tough. Kind of a rocky, we go from one extreme to the other. I'm just reading your guys' chat here. Javier, so you're doing this career manually. What is the game doing for you? For instance, are the AI drivers the same or different each one? So, in theory, they're the same uh, because of how GTR2 picks drivers. Uh, I'm manually having to do it. Uh, and because I did not make some of these races in the championship because I did not have enough money. I just haven't been tracking it, but you will typically get the same drivers. Um, if you have your classes done correctly. So that's not a huge issue. The reason in a multi class race, the reason for not doing a championship through GTR two, where it tracks the points because it will not track the points per as far as I know, or as far as I can tell, it will not track the points for each class. It only gives overall points, which makes it kind of difficult. The only way to combat that would be to give everybody points throughout the field. Um, which I guess would be an option. But still, if you get like maybe a GT1 car goes a couple laps down, gets inserted into your GTS field, that kind of, to me, messes up the points. Um uh, so I, I would have to do it manually, I think. Mm, uh, let's see. Mike, was it GTR2 that had the Power and Glory mod? Yes. Uh, but I think you can also get the Power, Power and Glory mod for GT Legends, if I'm not mistaken. Ian, hey Billy, how do the modern EGT cars from URD compared with the older ones? Because I see a pack simply labeled EGT with a Viper. They're, in my eyes, they're a little different. I don't think they actually are comparable. The Detroit and the Bayro are more like um, what you're thinking of for that class. And the Viper... The other pack that's labeled EGT, I believe, is just GT3 cars. I could be wrong. It's been a while. And I don't really... Those cars, to me, aren't as well done as the Bayro or the, the AMR um, and the Detroit, in my opinion. Darren, do I have the 10th anniversary patch installed? Yes. Gamer Muscle, I didn't know you were live. Well, uh, it, was, it was a secret. Um, I, <laughs> that's okay. I don't, I don't expect that, but that's, that's nice. While we're talking here, I can launch a replay of the race and we can see how terrible I was doing. Um, let's see here. Where am I at? Laguna, Laguna, Laguna. Play. It may crash, it may not. Uh, let's see here. Kill it. Wasn't there a conversion for the Power and Glory mod for RF1 as well? There might have been. I don't remember. Has a Corvette, and the only GT3 Corvette is a Callaway. Yeah, I don't know. Those cars aren't EGT cars, though, are they? The Viper and stuff? I don't know. Hamilton, I don't suppose you'd be able to show off your in-game settings for force feedback and sensitivities for me. I'm just getting into trying GTR. No worries if not. So there is a, if you go to race department, I don't know if you've installed it yet, but there is a deal that you can put in. It's like Shovas or something, his force feedback. Uh, and then I am not running anything fancy. I think my strength is around 40 or 45. It's also dependent on the car because each 
especially when you start getting into mods, the cars don't have the same level of force feedback. You can actually go into each individual car, and if the force feedback multiplier, if you want to leave your force feedback in-game always the same, you can change it per car, or you can do it the opposite. You can change it per game. Oh, that wasn't the beginning. There's the beginning. You'll have to let me know if it's too loud because I know the TV camera stuff can be a little louder. Um, so anyway, uh, I just use, I think it's show us, uh, files for the force feedback. As far as like my Thrustmaster profile, I kind of, I still kind of change it a lot. Uh, I'd have to double check. It's not too bizarre, but I did mess with a few things, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Mike has a question for me. Okay. Uh, I will wait for your question. Uh, Ian, the Viper did run GTLM GTE. The GT3R was in GT3. That's... Okay. It's all confusing to me. I don't... probably follow it as close as I should. No problem, Jamilton. Here's where we had a mistake. I let the car buy, and then just touched him in it and it turned me just just did it just right Pinkham, how does GTR 2 stand up in modern day sims it's a lot of fun still it's great for offline there's I think there's still a community there was somebody in here earlier talking about doing online stuff is it as refined as some of the newer Sims? No. Um, the 10th anniversary patch does a lot to help the graphics department out. Uh, what else? Uh, that show the force feedback tweak does help with the force feedback. Again, it's not as nuanced, it's not as detailed, but I think it's serviceable. Uh, I actually like the way a lot of the cars handle, especially when you start making just some slight setup changes. Um, again, you're not getting the depth or fidelity that you do in newer titles, but it still gives you a really good sense of the car being connected to the road, and it does things that are predictable. It doesn't do anything weird, uh, and there's a lot of content for it. You kind of have to hunt for it because we lost no grip racing, but it, there's still quite a bit of content out there. So, you know, pick it up on sale. Make sure you get that four gigabyte patch that helps run it on modern systems a little better because I was getting crashes. We didn't get a crash at all this stream. So that was a positive. CB, good evening. Just came out of two hours cruising at high force in VR. So but is it because you were at high force or was it because you were in VR? Two, time, two hours is uh, not a short time to be in VR. Darren, can't check this right now, but I'm seeing game user log results warning. Make sure you set this in your player profile. This makes sure you actually get proper results. Game user data log results. I'd have to look at that. I thought that was something with telemetry, but maybe that's something with results of the actual uh, results of a race oh <laughs> Mike was trying to ask uh, I get it how many slot cars I had uh-huh my favorite combo to run are we talking on here in a sim or like slot cars oh I see too old asking uh, about Shotoko. That, I had so much fun doing the LA Canyons yesterday. I am seriously thinking about downloading the Shotoko uh, and giving it a whirl. Because that was, that was a fun stream yesterday. We had a good time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There is a site, a site called Sim Results that will show the results. Do you have to like import it or something? It 
See we out of stream be nice to cruise with you. Uh yeah. Um you know that kind of when I'm doing these I'm doing a video uh but maybe there's a point where I can just uh, not worry about that and just kind of cruise around with other people. To we'll get Shotoko, it's like a whole new thing for AC. Pretty fun. Yeah, I was watching a couple videos on it. It did look... It did look really cool. Uh, like I said, I've never been kind of into that, but having tried LA Canyons yesterday, and again, I'm not a streetcar person. I just don't care. See, that's where we got messed up. I just don't care for running streetcars on racetracks. It's just not my thing. Um, but doing that yesterday on, and I know we ended up using some race cars too, but offline I had to actually use street cars. I actually had a lot of fun on the roads using street cars, so. Mike, I originally thought AC combo, but it extends to any, any sim. Um, yeah, you can see some damage on the front of our car there. Let's see. I haven't tried it in a while. And I know I've tried other combinations that I really like since, uh, but they're, they're not hitting me off the top of the head. I really liked an automobilista running the caterums, especially around... Is it Caldwell? What's the track that's... Real, it moves all over the place. Fairly tight, moves all over the place. Kind of gets the rip for being a mini, like Nurburg, uh, Nordschleife or something like that. I thought that was one of the best driving experiences that I've had. I've had others, I just can't think of them off the top of my head. Darren, this website allows you to upload your sim race log files and transform them into a readable format. The results will be saved and public so you can share them with your... No kidding. I had no idea. I appreciate that. I didn't... I didn't know. Similar, but if they're like the R2 versions are good fun. Oh, I see you're answering something up there. So the new EGTs are BOP to the Porsche, Ferrari, Corvette, and AC. Also the pack with the Viper and ALMS... Our ALMS stuff from around 2012. Okay. Yeah, sim results. The log files are in user data log results. Okay, I had no idea. I appreciate that. Mike, I want to do the Japan Highway, but with loads of players. Otherwise, it would be dead as the structure is a little bland and concrete jungle. Headwell Park. Okay. That's what I was trying to think. Yeah, that's one of the best experiences I've had running. Derek. Oh, hello? Has that amazing jump before the last hairpin. Yes. Yeah, and there's that middle section where you just, like, drop down, and it kind of runs right by the start fin or the front straightaway, and then it goes back up, kind of through the hill again. The server for Shotoko is packed. It's literally the most popular online thing in AC now, more than SRS even. It, it's so interesting what uh, sparks a community. But I, I, I get it with AC because the, the content is so wide and varied. You know, I think for all the while, I don't know about now, but, you know, the drifting scene was really big. NAC. Um, so stuff like this makes sense. Just cruising around and... Yeah, I, I could see how that... That can be entertaining. funny uh, before I shut the stream off do you have you guys have any interest in actually seeing like it's just a bunch of numbers but 
how I how I end up recording and, and doing this stuff for the custom career. Act super hard and weave it out to the max. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, is it? Random call sign has a tendency to get bombarded. All right. Before turn the stream off. We finished 15th. Me. I don't know what's going to pop up, so I'm going to just throw up the thumbnail real quick. Make sure I'm not displaying sensitive information. Uh, this. This. Oh, nope, that's wrong. Not that one. This one. And cost. Okay, I don't know how well you guys are going to be able to see this without me resizing, but we'll try it. I have no idea if that's readable or not. So these are just all my standard notes about how much it's going to cost to enter, for instance, endurance races. Then we have our national slash FIA races, and then we have club races where they are just more single category stuff. David Hopkins, anybody going to be tractor racing tomorrow when Epic Store gives away Farming Simulator 19 for... They're giving away farming? Really? I have the Epic account. I might do that just to... Just to see. I have no idea what that's like, but just to see. So anyway, these are the different entry fees. Oh, don't do that. Stop it. Uh, these are the different entry fees for me. This, if I need, if I want to ship my car overseas, there's that. If I'm staying the night, here's hotel stays, my airfare rate. Uh, this is what my traveling over land rate is. If I have to go anywhere but Laguna Seca. Oh, yeah, it's a big thing. Too old farming simulator. Um, I don't know if I can make that any bigger. Hold on. Let me see if I can. It's the best I can do there. Martin, it's really fun to be honest. That's funny. I've never tried it. I've never tried Farming Simulator. We're, I bought two games from Epic. I bought WRC8 and then I bought World War Z because I, myself and my bandmates, um, play uh, World War Z together. It's actually pretty fun. It's kind of like a Left 4 Dead kind of thing. So then... Sponsor, just to remind me, a seat ride. If I decide to purchase a ride from somebody else, that's that. And then these are my repair costs. That's how I figure that out. And then this is my race, race length guideline. Here's the madness of my calendar. Oh, Cable Teapot, thank you. Yes, Mike, I accounted for everything, except I didn't do inflation. Uh, so then this is where we start to... This means that the Daytona 24 is part of the... We'll call it the Grand Am slash... We'll say it's Grand Am from 01 to 09. Uh, Bathurst 12 from 07 to 09. So that's the corresponding years that it would happen. 
And as you can see, it starts getting much more complicated. Again, Grand Am 06. So I actually have a Grand Am mod for 2006. So when we get there, I might run Grand Am just depending on how it works. Uh, ALMS for Sebring 12 hour, 01 to 09. So every time I hit this weekend, I'm not adjusting. It was too complicated to go by every year. So I just took the 2019 calendar year and just kept using that. It was a little easier to keep track of. And then, uh, so you can see the ELMS, when they ran, it was just 2001, so those would run together. Uh, FIA for the next weekend, FIA, that's a possibility in 2007. Now, what I also do is, if I happen upon this, but maybe it's not 2006, I will still consider running a race at Rodriguez as a club race instead if I have money to race that weekend. So it kind of gives an opportunity for other races to happen that aren't necessarily waiting for 2006. I know it's a little on the confusing side, but, you know, for this, for instance, I have that Porsche that I'm running. If I had money to race this weekend, but there's technically no race in 2001, I will make a race at Rodriguez this weekend as a club race to, you know, put out content instead of skipping further and further. It gives me an opportunity to get more money to possibly make the ne next race in the series if I was deficient. Um, but it also adds an extra element of I could crash and then not make the next race. So then I have to plan out. How much can I afford in this race? If I'm really close, well, maybe I don't race this weekend so that for sure I can make the next ALMS race the following weekend, if that makes sense. It's kind of how I did it in the real world. So anyway, I color code it so I know FIA stuff is going to be yellow, Grand Am is red, American Le Mans series is orange, European is green, Australian supercars when we get there is blue, and then Super GT is gray. So anyway, we go through the months, and that's all that. Show you, uh, where are we at? April, show you May. So you can see all of a sudden as it picks up in the, in, the, in the middle of the year, we have a bunch of races to choose from. Again, these back here just signify the official race on that weekend, what it would have been. So for 01, it would have been Zolder. For 02 and 03, it's Brno. For 04, it's Hockenheim. For 08, it's Monza. So when we get there, and if we're running the FIA schedule, we run the corresponding uh, correct racetrack for that weekend. When I run out of money, no. If I can't make a club race, I don't get to race that weekend. So if I run out of money, let's say, I, which I've done this season... I have $500 every week from my job that I can put towards my race budget. So there was a period in the beginning of my career where I ran out of money and I actually skipped like a month or two for races because I just didn't have enough money to run. So that's how that works. You run out of money, you wait for your $500 a week, you know, extra that you get from your job to start paying back for entering a race. What was that? Wait, GM's real life is less organized than this by some margin. <laughs> well, again, I am, again, I don't do it like halfway. I go all in like super nerdy kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so then I have to figure out what am I committing at the beginning of the following Season. So for 2002, I have to make a decision. What series am I going to try to follow? It's going to get more complicated when Grand Am comes into the picture in 06. Super GT comes into the picture uh, in 05 through 09. Uh, V8s come into the picture in 06 and 09. So there's. I'm going to have much more. Options, so I'm going to pick a series and stick to that and that's going to be above anything else what I'm going to pick I will save money to try and make every race in that series if I have extra money Then I can either I might have a I might have a car that I own that I can run a different race 
in 06. Let's say that I have enough money where um, I've committed to running the V8s in 06, right? But the following weekend, well, shoot. There's a race in the Grand M series in 06. I either have a car to run that or maybe I rent a ride and go run that. Or maybe I decide to go run the ALMS race at Miller. Or maybe I go run Spa in the ELMS race. Like I have those options available. Just makes it a little more interesting. And again, this is something that I did in real racing. I kind of planned out my schedule. And then if I had enough money, I go race somewhere else or with another series or something like that. So I really kind of put my real world experience to use uh, while figuring out all of this. And again, it's ludicrous. It took me a long time to do. <laughs> So again, you can see what's going on here. We get to July. And again, the the ultimate goal in my the beginning uh, before I kind of did all this, but I'm keeping it is to run spa 24 in a GT1 car and try to hit the podium, if not win. That's kind of the ultimate uh, goal. Run through here. This is what the August schedule looks like. This is what September. So right now we are here. So let's say that I had won and I got a good amount of money. I could have rented a ride. Um, nope, wouldn't have rented a ride here, but I could have made like a club race instead. And then the following weekend is Road Atlanta. Hopefully I have enough money to make it to road Atlanta. It's an endurance race, which costs me more money because tires and fuel. Uh, it's going to cost me money and travel. It's then it, it costs me a, a higher race entry fee. So it's, you know, doing these longer races theoretically are much more taxing, but you also get compensated more if you can do well. A <laughs> plot twist. Billy gets stuck in the 993 for the whole season. <laughs> Oh, well-funded driver. Yeah, that's even more. That adds more complication. I've already made it complicated enough, but I, I get what you're saying. Here's what October looks like. And we there's some interesting tracks. Now, the thing is here, as I've gone through, I figured out some of the tracks don't work. So like Portland did not work. I had Portland in here. That ended up not working well. I had, um, like I mentioned before, Barber. That didn't work well. So sometimes... I have to, when I test, I have to ax some of these because some of these tracks just don't work. But theoretically, this is what I'm supposed to do. We go to November. So these purple ones, magenta, whatever color that is, are special races that don't necessarily coincide with the series, but I still want it on the calendar for the option to run them. Surface Paradise, the only track where chicanes work. Any tracks on the list I dread racing at? Not really. I I have a a lot of fun at most of the tracks. Um, I don't know. I really haven't gotten to one yet. And then there's a couple races in December. And then this is my cost analysis sheet. I know again this super nerdy. So let's go over to budget. So you can see I've made, I've paid attention to what I've run. Now, the caveat with this was I changed kind of directions around this time. Where before I was kind of making a series up for here in the United States. Then I got a hold of the ALMS stuff, which is mainly the prototype cars. And I kind of made a pseudo ALMS series. So we kind of shifted gears. Still wouldn't have made all the races. That's irrelevant. So you can see I like through here all of a sudden I like got smart and started like importing my balance to here. I don't know why I wasn't doing that before, but you know, whatever. <laughs> uh, so you can see here, this is where I would put in my damage from this race. This would be where I put in my winnings from this race. And I like to remind myself where I finished for posterity's sake, basically. 
And during the tracks you use, could you link them as you are going to do them so others can see how they would compare? So I would, except the, I was going to, and there is a site that I was getting them from that became infected with a virus. Luckily, mine, my PC didn't get infected, but I saw what was happening and I killed everything, went through my scrub, my whole hard drive, made sure that there were, there was nothing on there. So I don't want to give anybody that site now because I don't want somebody going there that gets their stuff infected, which really sucks because they had a ton of mods on there. It was like almost a safe haven for because no grip is gone. Um, unfortunately, uh, cause somebody had asked in the very first time I did a stream with this and I was like, you know what? I should just post the link. You just kind of have to be careful because they had ads and stuff that were annoying. Uh, but when I went back to start researching some vet better versions of mid Ohio, um, they had a version on there that I wanted. I went to download it and all of a sudden I got one of those fun little pop-ups. I'm like, Oh hell no. So I started like doing all this stuff, got it before, you know, anything happened, which, you know, worked out well, but I don't, I don't want to give anybody that link cause it, it sucks. You know, you don't want that to happen. So that's always the risk of doing some of these things with modding. That's why I like race department because race department doesn't have that issue. At least I've never had it happen. Yes, that was the DE site. You are correct, Darren. Yeah, it was fine. It just had, you know, ads. You know, you do one of those, you click on it. The thing pops up. You got to wait five seconds and then you can skip the ad, do the download and the whole thing. Yeah, OK, fine, whatever. I would just close everything out, hit the home button so that nothing would if it had the potential to pop up it wouldn't do it i'd just be downloading the file the problem happened where when i did that all of a sudden before i even got to download the file it was giving me one of those nasty pop-ups where it was like oh your system uh is going really slow and it wouldn't go away so i had to like get tricky with trying to stop it and then closing it out real quick before i reloaded uh you know you get those where you even though you close your internet browser you you click on it to open it back up and it tries to start it all over again. So I had to be really quick with how I got rid of it. And then I scrubbed my hard drive, made sure that they didn't install anything or put any garbage on there. Um, and I don't want anybody to go through that one. Yeah, don't. Unless somebody goes on there and tells me otherwise, I wouldn't I wouldn't go on there because it's not. It's not friendly. Yeah, Geracer's right. Using Adblock is probably a better way to deal with it. I don't use ad block. Um, probably should. Yes. The nineties pop up. Yes. Can't tell you how many times you sit there and go, no. And you like start freaking out. So anyway, this is where I would enter in all my, my winnings and stuff like that. Come up with the next race that I'm going to run. And then I'll obviously figure out, you know, if it was next week, another 500 bucks, two weeks later, a thousand bucks, it would give me this total. And then I'd have to figure out my travel expense. So here's travel. I have land and air travels depending on the track. And then my payout sheets for the type of race that it is. Basically, most of the series don't change their payout. It seems like after fifth. So I just kind of use that as a guideline. Some do depending on the races, but it was too complicated. So I just made fifth like a hey, you finish fifth. Everybody gets the same. Which in sprint car racing, it was kind of the same thing. I think you finish 10th or 12th and then everybody gets paid the same all the way down. Yeah, I, I typically don't surf the web. That's the thing like this PC doesn't typically surf the web. But when I was trying to do the GTR two stuff, I was like, ah, you know, I, I'll be selective and careful. And it was fine. And then it turned out not to be. Darren, I get, I get told that I should do that a lot. <laughs> I get told that you know, I should do some sort of a design document, um, and give it to devs. I mean, if I'd be down, if the dev wants to work on a career with me, I, I would, I love that kind of stuff. I would totally do it. 
Um, probably don't want to hear from somebody like me, though. Uh, I, I tend to give input probably when they don't want it. Um, I try to be as positive or reinforce. Uh, it's just been my experience when I have worked with developers in the past. You don't take. There is like a line, like a threshold that they have where they deem your input irrelevant or unnecessary. Um, you kind of don't know what you, you know, would think that I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, and then they get to a point where they're like, we're just going to ignore what you're saying. So, I don't know. I thought the idea was to make a good product, not be uh, isolated in your own little echo chamber bubble. But, you know, I get it. It's an artistic vision and people, that's their baby. And <laughs> it's the big one of the big reasons I, I had a lot of criticism for ACC. They had the potential to do something really cool with their single player career and instead they just kind of gave us a slap together thing that's really just championships and it's kind of like you, you could have done so much more with this yeah I like CBS, that's exactly where I'm at it gives me a mental reason to continue with something I think that's a big thing that a lot of sims miss everybody probably has their one sim that they like but I find that I need, because I like a bunch of Sims, I need a reason to go back. And now it's turned into content, which isn't a bad thing, instead of something like this, where you have a drive to improve and to get better because it correlates with some form of, pro of progression in the game. So anyway, I had to I had to adjust like my car values because this should really be like 815,000. I actually went through and looked up modern day equivalents or tried to find the car and figure out how much it was selling for. Uh when I started doing the numbers, it didn't work with what they're paying, which is true in real life. You don't really make a whole lot of money if any in racing unless you can get a bunch of sponsors. <laughs> so I had to make the career work. I basically had to take a zero off of the car's purchasing price in order to make it attainable. So you can see we basically started with the lowest car uh, because that was the least amount of money. And then we work up from there. There was a racing game with money that you had something like this on the Dreamcast. It could have been Sega GT. I played that. But anyway, here's next season. So I've got all these seasons laid out all the way through 2009. Again, these these prices have not been adjusted yet, but you can see, you know, 2.8 million for a Ford GT GT1 car. I literally tested every single car. Uh, for a lap time at Imola and then I don't I didn't feel like the FIA groupings were necessarily indicative of really good racing so then I made my own groupings of cars so yeah that's uh that's how I do the career nothing uh you know I don't know if it's really anything amazing, but I, uh, I don't know. I like stuff like this. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. It's, uh, admittedly a bit nerdy, but people, I don't know. People seem to like it. So that's really why I keep doing it. People keep watching and liking the videos. And as long as people are enjoying it, I will, I keep doing this stuff because I have fun. And I think, I think that'll do it. So, been good fun. I appreciate everybody hanging out. I know a uh, bit of a nerdy thing, and I know that the race didn't exactly uh, turn out like I wanted, but 
Again, I'm not going to restart it. That's what happens. Happens in real racing. <laughs> yeah, and who doesn't like a good spreadsheet? But uh, yeah, I've got uh, interesting. So I, while we're here on this screen, I got this. I got this. And I got this on the latest Steam sale. I didn't know what this was. I had heard it involved driving. It does, but it doesn't. So I don't know if I'm going to have a stream of this, but it's very intriguing. It's very story heavy, really weird, but it's kind of cool. But I thought there was like driving segments in it and it's not. You actually pick a point on the map and kind of move the car along the screen. Uh, screen. So I was like, eh, this might not go over so well. Um, <laughs> my geeks tingle at the thought. Martin, yes. Nate, thank you. Um, so, Crumple Zone is like, what was it? A destruction or demolition derby like on the PS1? So I think I'm going to have a bit of fun and just do this in a stream. Just for the hell of it. Uh, the thing I realized is with the gamepad, it does not like everything else plugged in. So I have to unplug like my pedals and my wheel because it throws it into a fit. Horse racing. No, it, so it's a dog. It's a dog with a hat. So you have this, I started it last night just to see, and you're driving this big like box delivery van. It's, I don't, are there any screenshots? It's really bizarre, but there's, you, you're, you, you're trying to make deliveries and Kentucky Route Zero is this like ethereal, um, supernatural highway. And so like the beginning, you drive this box truck up to this gas station in the middle of nowhere because you're looking for this road that you're trying to make a delivery on. And you have this dog with you and the dog wears a straw hat. But anyway, it's it's very story and conversation heavy. Again, I don't think that's something that goes over real well on my channel. Probably. I don't know. But but it's it's very intriguing. Like I'm really intrigued. It's kind of a little on the puzzly side. Yes, I could see how that makes sense. Ryan, <laughs> Ryan looks different. <laughs> That's funny. Um, this looked like a mobile game, but it was super cheap. I was like, ow, what the hell? But again, I have to unplug everything so that it doesn't freak it out. But I also thought this was would be kind of a fun, just lax kind of stream to do. It's not serious. I like stuff like this every once in a while. Like Sean says, it's a good diversion game. Uh, I don't know if it's good, by the way. <laughs> I'm just saying that stuff like this is kind of fun just to change it up. Oh, the Goose Game. I have not tried the Goose Game at all, but everybody seems to like it because you can be a jackass in it to everybody. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I may end up trying one of these in a stream in the next day or two. Just for the hell of it. Yeah, you're right. I don't know. This it, this is really interesting. And it the difference would be it has there's no voice acting in it. So in theory, I could do a lot of the voice acting per se. Uh, because there's a lot of text on the screen. There's a conversation. So it shows you who's talking and whatnot. Um, again, I don't know how much people would want to watch that but it, it's definitely interesting like it's weird but I kind of like weird games <laughs> so um, yeah I don't know I'm, we'll see how it goes maybe this is something that I do because like I said it's it's very very intriguing. I would just start back from the beginning. I haven't played all that much. 16 minutes. So I was just trying to see if it was anything good. Art style is interesting as well. So we'll see. But anyway. All right. Well, we'll think about it. 
How about that? Uh, or maybe I'll make it like, a, well, I don't know. We'll take, we'll, we'll kind of take it, take it as it is. But anyway, I'm going to hop off. I appreciate everybody hanging out. I'm going to go edit this video down. Video of shame. And uh, yeah, I just appreciate everybody hanging out for the ride today while I recorded this, uh, while I recorded my GTR2 race. So I will see you all later. Well, let's see. Well, I guess we could exit with a little bit of racing. And uh, yeah, I will catch you guys in the next stream. See ya. Have a good evening or day, depending on where you're at.